end of the third hour here today. It's one o'clock central standard time. I'm Alex Jones, your host, and John McAfee, of course, uh, the most famous uh, antivirus uh, maker out there in the company. He's still one of the top companies out there that bears his name. He's an inventor, a journalist, a really interesting fella. And of course, uh, the website is whoismcafee.com. And he joins us here. We're going to come back in the next segment and really get into all the things he wants to cover. But he was here about an hour before it came out, and he said, "Yeah, I just talked to, I just talked to NBC, and they're going to be, uh, you know, talking about how the Feds tried to hire him to come try to fix health care. So I guess they are all hands on deck trying to hire all the tech gurus to fix stuff. We're going to talk about that coming up in the next segment. But John, it is great to meet you in person, buddy. Well, it's great to meet you, Alex. I've talked to you on the phone so many times. I I felt like I knew you anyway. Well, it's good to have you here. What do you think of Austin so far? I like Austin. Very nice town. It's uh, it's small, small enough to uh, uh, to be enjoyable and not too crowded, and yet uh, large enough to have coffee shops. Well, it used to be a lot smaller, like a hundred thousand people. Now it's over a million, but it right, is it is spread out. But right, uh, I hear you have a water problem. We do. We're running out of water. Well, until it flooded last week. I mean, <laughs> every decade or so, there's a drought. But it's it's it, next. We're going to have the dams about to break. So uh, all right. Well, that's that's preferable. I think. I think the prettiest places in Austin uh, would be down on, uh, say, the Colorado River. Have you seen that yet? I have. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm staying. I think that's the river I'm staying on uh, at the uh, Four Seasons. I've got a beautiful view of some river. There, there were punters out this morning. So, What do you want to get into? I mean, obviously, we'll talk about Obamacare. That's the big breaking news. We'll get an update on Brazil, NSA. Uh, you say there's more than just the NSA spying on us. Well, obviously. I mean, if, if the NSA is spying on us and they're just one covert branch of the government, then everybody has to be. It would be ridiculous to have this, the NSA spying on, on the U.S. population, but the CIA and the FBI and other covert arms not doing it, or the military. So you know for a fact that we're being spied on by everyone. You know, Edward Snowden just blew the whistle on one aspect, and so we're focused on that. And the other, the other branches are probably going, oh, please don't let them focus on us. Well, that's right. I mean, there's 15 big intelligence agencies, but it gets worse than that because it came out the DEA is hooked into the NSA, tracking everybody. I mean, so they're listening to you talk about a pot plant you've got growing in your backyard. Well, I don't smoke pot, but... Uh, no, no, but I meant the public <laughs> out there, sure. Of course, right. So the, uh, the, all, all the agencies cooperate to a certain extent. I mean, they're jealous of each other and they keep guarded secrets, but you can be guaranteed that something of interest to one agency may be of interest to another. And, and so... There's nothing that we do that isn't known now. I mean, that has to be the case. I also want to talk about your product when it comes out because, I mean, you're already one of the most famous uh, computer-type inventors out there. Uh, I tell you, this will be revolutionary if it's not just an off-site proxy you go through because we know they, they tap the backbone before it even gets there. They bragged about that. If it's a device in front of your computer, I don't know why I didn't think of that. I guess I'm not John McAfee. Well, you know, it's, it's a very simple concept. People think that it's going to be difficult to implement, but it's not. It's a very simple idea. It's just you step outside the box and say, okay, everyone's trying to fix the Internet. It's, it's too big. It's been here too long. There are too many pieces. Uh, I said, well, it, it can't be fixed. Why don't we just create another Internet, sort of a sub part of the real Internet? And as it grows, perhaps that will be the new Internet. But it's very simple. The, the, uh, the, the concept rests on the principle that if they do not know, if no one knows, even yourself, the ID of the person you're sending it to or receiving information from, then how can anybody watch that information? And if the information itself is encrypted, then even if it is intercepted, it means nothing. And my encryption technique has, has not been vetted by the NSA or they were not involved in the development of it, so uh, like every other technique is, so it, they can't look at it, nor can any other agency. Well, John McAfee's our guest in studio. I'm your host, Alex Jones. And when we come back, we're going to dive into an in-depth interview. I'm going to ask him about human potential, where he thinks things are going, transhumanism, Ray Kurzweil. I've got a bunch of my questions. We're going to cover his points first. As I asked him before we went live, what do you want to cover? I've got a list of four things. It's all coming up live, uncensored, straight ahead. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. Well, John McAfee is our guest. He's come to Austin to visit with us. And this morning, he did a interview with CNBC, and it's GOP as for tech founder, ex-fugitive McAfee, to diagnose Obamacare. And that fits in with the Politico article, Tech Surge to Repair Obamacare Websites. They're saying it's like the Manhattan Project. 
uh, as they panic to try to fix it. Now, of course, John McAfee is an extremely famous um, computer programmer, engineer, worked for all sorts of big corporations, NASA, you name it. He developed McAfee, which is still the dominant uh, antivirus system out there. He's also been uh, better known lately for escaping out of the kleptocratic uh, area of Belize and exposing connections uh, to the communist Chinese, uh, Muslim terrorists, you name it, uh, Ryerson plots. And when he broke this on our show, I said, man, that is hard to believe. And But I, I still had him on and said it may be true. But then it all later came out in the news, months and months later. So he is uh, definitely a blessed, uh, charmed man to have been able to make it out of there into Guatemala and then back to the good old U.S. of A. And we're going to talk about his view on the world and so many issues, the NSA, you name it. But first, sir, let's get into Obamacare. Uh, wow. So you've been contacted by the government to try to come in and fix it. What did you tell them and why did you refuse? Well, I was, I was contacted by the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. Uh, they're the ones that oversee the uh, Obamacare package. Uh, and if I would come out and, and basically oversee uh, uh, some of the changes and give them input on, on what needed to be done. Um, I said, sure. Then they added, but we can't pay your expenses or anything. The government is shut down. And I'm thinking, well, you pay $600 million to, to uh, a completely uh, inoperable uh, agency to build this system. And I said, okay, well, I'll pay, I'll pay my own way. And uh, they said, okay. And then they came back and said, well, we can't even get the, the committee members all together because, again, the, 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 the chaos of the shutdown, can we do it on the phone? And at that point, I go, okay, I'm out of here. Um, they expect me to, to give them advice on a system that requires showing them charts and graphs and how this thing is put together and what's wrong with it, and they want to do it over the phone. They're not serious. They just want to say, we contacted McAfee, he gave us some advice, and we're going to implement it, which is utter nonsense. They're not. My advice would be, throw it away and start over. You cannot, you cannot fix the system that's there. It is impossible. The way it is architected, any good programmer will tell you, it's just not going to work. And they can pour money into it, another $50 million, another $100 million. It will never work the way that it is. It needs to be redone. A friend of mine, Mike Adams, who's a successful computer programmer, he said the same thing two and a half weeks ago. He said several things. He said, it looks like basically chimpanzees were in there tied up to keyboards writing this. It's gibberish. It's not even bad code. Yes. That came out today. Yes. And he said that the government always throws more money at something that doesn't work when you need to scrap it. But he said that's what all the top programmers are saying. That is what you, John McAfee, as a well-known top programmer, are saying, but clearly the Commerce Committee knows that too. So what do you think the real reason is? Mike and others are saying, well, now it's actually coming out that it's really an NSA front and they're just getting data for who doesn't have insurance to find them and it's totally cold-blooded. Might be, might be, because it doesn't seem like they were serious in actually implementing a Medicare system. Um, and you're right, the code. Uh, after, after the rollout, there were programmers that went on bulletin boards asking for help on programs that they've been working on for this system, all of them Indian. A CGI has over 10,000 programmers in the country of India, and they're doing very basic programming in a language that only runs on the front end, that is your, your computer. So when you log on to Obamacare, the programs are downloaded to your computer and run, and then ship the data back. It's a very cheap and easy way of doing it. And that's fine if you have 10 or 20 users, but if you have millions, it just isn't gonna work. And that's why the architecture can't support it. But, but to have a company that, that whose, whose uh, employees are asking for help from the general public on fixing their problems is absurd. If you go through the code, there, there are fundamental misspellings in there. Uh, you know, th this shouldn't be happening. This should be a professional company. And that company, CGI, that, that worked for the, the, uh, the government of Canada about seven years ago, was fired because of incompetence and not delivering what they had wanted. So why did we choose a Canadian company when there are plenty of American companies that are, that are very technically competent in this area? I have no idea. Well, that's another issue. Consumer Reports is now saying don't go to the website because you can basically have your identity stolen on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not just the website. You don't even know that if it's a legitimate website because there are, there are so many examiners that can have their own websites. And uh, sorry, that's my telephone here. Hey, it kind of sounds cool. It's like Star Trek. Let me turn this sucker off. So there's, there are so many um, uh, examiner sites that anybody can put together. 
and the um, uh, the sites can be made by hackers. They can steal your identity. They can ask for your social security number. And the following day, your bank account's going to be empty. And, and this is going to cost consumers, in terms of lost income and identity theft, more than the entire Obamacare package costs to implement. Unbelievable. And Obama came out today. I forget the exact quote. Let me look at DrudgeReport.com and find it. He came out and called it a good deal and that it's exceeding expectations. Well, I mean, I don't know whose expectations those would be. But Does that win the BS award of all time? Well, I think so, or unless your expectations are dramatically lower than, than any sane person would want to have. So really, uh, that makes no sense. What would the expectations be if, in fact, when it rolled out, you couldn't log on, you couldn't get support, there was no security, um, and it was, it was crashing every three minutes? So what, what expectations could you possibly have that it met? I have no clue. That is definitely bullshit. And, again, John McAfee's our guest in studio. Uh, going back here, then, to understand this, the Republican uh, committee uh, chair calls you up and says, help us fix it, and they want you to just tell them over the phone how to fix something that's, like, many times more complex than landing probably the Mars rover on the moon, something this complex with all these different hundreds of millions of people that are supposed to use it, with all these interfaces and all these exchanges, and nobody's ever made something like this work before from what I've been told. Right. And, and then they want you over the phone to, to tell them it. how to do it. Uh, right. What did you say to them? Well, the, the, first of all, it wasn't the, the committee chairman. It was the, uh, the lawyer for the committee, a guy sure. named Sean Hayes, who, who contacted me. And he was very flattering. He said, you know, I'm sure this won't be a heavy lift for you with a man of your expertise and all of this. Uh, and I said, well, okay. And then he said, well, but I can't pay you expenses. And I go, well, okay. I mean, I'm a good American. You need help, I'll help. Then when it, it, it got down to, um, you know, we can't get the committee members all together. Can you do this over the phone? I realized that they're not even serious. I never even responded. This was an email, this last one. I just, they wanted you as a PR name. As a PR name. Say, we contacted John McAfee, and he's given us great advice, and don't worry, everything's going to be fine. But it's not. And so I, I don't want to be involved in Did it. Did you give him the advice you gave our listeners, scrap it? Uh, well, they know that. I've been saying that on, in the press for a week now. Um, so, yeah, they have to scrap it, and they're not going to listen to that. Or at least scrap the front end. I mean, without... Well, well how do you have a website based on a law? It's got to follow this cockamamie law. I, well, that's, uh, that's the other problem here. Technology within the government. There are 6,000 pages of regulations for how you develop technological programs. We're in a, and, it, and it takes years to write those regulations. Technology is an area where every year you throw your cell phone away because it's out of date and you get a new one with new features. Technology is advancing rapidly. The regulations are years old. How on earth can you develop a high-tech program using regulations that take three years to write? That's the fundamental problem. It has to be simplified. Throw the regulations out. Trust the people that you're contracting with. Get American customers, get American uh, companies to produce the thing. And, and, and let's get real here. Well, there are laws that uh, most of our tech that's government funded should come from the U.S., but they religiously ignore it because of globalism. They want to deindustrialize this country so they can pick the winners and losers. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, given that, then you can't complain when your systems don't work. You can't complain when... Ta and I'm not, I'm not putting down Indians, by the way, or, or India. They are very intelligent people and great programmers. But CGI takes them and, go, and puts them through a three-month training class. Three months. And expects them to now produce miracle code. It doesn't work. And then way. connect it with all the other code. And connect it with all the other code. It's like, sure, that's a very cheap way of doing it. And you're going to get a lot of code. But then how on earth do you fix it? This is the problem. But I've talked to programmers that say, and now it's in the news, that it's just gibberish, a lot of it. Like people Absolutely. just gave up and delivered crap. They did because they were under the gun for time. It has to be done. It has to be done. I know how that works. You're a programmer and you don't even understand what the problem is and you're trying to fix it. And your boss says, get it done by Friday. Well, you get it done by Friday and you turn it in and you hope no one ever runs that program to find out that it doesn't work. That's like homework you do on the school bus. That's it. it. it, it uh, <laughs> on the way, on the way. You're just scribbling as fast as you can. Go, I, hope, I hope the teacher doesn't read this. But unfortunately, you know, we do on these programs and it, we are, they are going to get found out. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not work. like Common Core where they teach the kids 2 plus <clears throat> 2 equals 4. A computer's got to have it right or it won't work. Absolutely. I guess the and banksters. percent right. Exactly. I guess the banksters and the globalists have finally tried to feed their con artist bull into a computer. That's it. And it's not working. <laughs> it's, it's certainly not working the way this was implemented. Oh, man. So what do you think is going to happen? He's now trying to blame Republicans and people that don't like socialist health care for the website failing. He did that in a speech today. 
Well, you know, you can blame the manager of the, of the technological program and nothing else. CG, CGI is responsible, period, for delivering a working program. They did not because really it was unrealistic given the, 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 the way that they did it. And, and they did it in order to make money. I understand that. You've got a certain income. You have $100 million that the government's paying you. If you can get, get it done for 500000 you have a 99 a uh, 0.5% profit margin. But now CGI is going to get more money to fix it. To, which they can't. And they're going to use those same programmers because you can't use new ones to, to fix an existing program. Whereas if they threw it out, grab some really decent programmers. I mean, very top-notch programmers because programmers... Well, don't tell them how to fix it. We, we want it to no, fail. Listen, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> not going to listen to me, okay? John McAfee, we're going to break. Incredible to have this guy in studio with us. We're going to come back and let him continue on that point. Then the NSA, his device he's coming up with very soon that I hope to sell here, and a lot more. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, and PrisonPlanet.tv. Who is McAfee.com is his site. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. John McAfee is uh, really amazing in person. And you saw all the media hype and the demonization of him when he was down in Belize. But we need to do a part two, maybe for the nightly news with you, where we go back and show how all the stuff you talked about with us earlier this year, or I guess last year, all of it later turned out to come out. It was, it was like a James Bond movie or something. So we'll have an update in the next segment uh, with Mr. McAfee with us. Again, I'm Alex Jones, if you just tuned in. But continuing with healthcare.gov, I mean, I understand as a top programmer, you know, reportedly genius level by the media and all the stuff you've invented over the years, that you look at this and you say it could be fixed. My issue is, I've talked to other programmers that are very smart as well. They say there's no way government didn't know this was a piece of crap and wasn't going to work. What do you think is really going on here? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, any sane person is going to test what they have developed at least one time. And usually you test it for many, many months. And if the government has any interest in this program, then they had to have people monitoring the development. So, of course, they knew it wasn't going to work or they didn't bother to test it at all. This is, this is the bizarre uh, truth of the issue. So I don't know what's going on. I do know that, that what happened is unthinkable uh, if, it were, if it were being managed by a, a true technological manager. They, they would not let this happen. You build the program, you, you design it, you go through an alpha test period for a few months, which is, you know, you, you have a few people logging in, then a beta test where you simulate massive amounts of input, and then you fix the problems and you roll it out. Clearly, they didn't go through any of that. This is this is not the normal way of developing software. I don't know what it is, but but I've never seen it before. I keep going back over this because it's it's just the whole thing is so not Orwellian, more Twilight Zone. Because Obama's up there saying it's a great deal and exceeding expectations and just bizarreness. It'd be like if my wife came home and I was in bed with seven women. And I got up and said, honey, I've never cheated on you, baby. <laughs> I mean, it's just the level of BS. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, by the way, it, it, that is the standard approach. I mean, if your wife does catch you in bed with a woman, you deny it. I mean, it's uh, just a fact. never, ever admit. So, so I guess it is, like, like Bill Clinton said, <laughs> deny, deny, deny. deny. So, right. so I guess it is literally, uh, what's the term they use for that in the Pentagon? Gaslighting. That's it. That's it. So, you know, I, I really don't have a clue. I am not politically connected. I can tell you everything you need to know about computers, software, networking, uh, security, but I don't have a clue. I what do, do you I think do about something's wrong and it's not going the way it should? What do you, 
What do you think about the whole NSA thing being exposed? We know that's been going on for a long time, but wh why now is it getting exposed and where do you think it's going? Well, it's getting exposed because, because someone, Edward Snowden, said something and showed us. Uh, now, he's hiding out in Russia now, unfortunately, Russia. Um, however, why are we worrying about the NSA? It's every single covert agency of the government, and there are 15 or 20 of those agencies. And you know for a fact that if one agency is spying on us, that they're all spying on us. This is a fact. And they all share information. So the CIA, the FBI, Army Intelligence, they are all watching us. I know this. I've known this for years. If I say something, people go, oh, you're paranoid, you're crazy. And it takes someone like Snowden to pop up and show us. And we go, oh, my God, the NSA is spying on us. Well, duh. Of course they are. They have been for years. Well, talking about CGI, they do the Pentagon's most complex <clears throat> systems, so they obviously knew this wasn't going to work. So therefore, it was done by design to put off Obamacare and only bring in the fine part. I think clearly it's just there to find people. It's entirely possible. You know, I don't know for a fact, but but something is going on that is that is is not sensible, not to the mind of someone who has been developing systems like this their whole life. So you could be absolutely right. Let's shift gears into your. Uh, device. Uh, I can't wait till this comes out. And we were talking during the break about the government won't be your biggest problem. Who will be your biggest problem with your device that blocks the NSA? I think the music industry and, and the TV industry, they are so um, paranoid about intellectual property. That is, please don't let anybody make one copy of my music or my, my video. And yet statistically, I mean, if you, if you look at the, the figures, the music industry and, and the television industry and the movie industry has never made more money than they are today uh, with all of the, the, uh, the piracy that's going on. And also st statistics say that people who pirate uh, videos are the most uh, purchasers. They pay them more money for the ones that they do want. So uh, they have no reason to be doing what they're doing. But I guarantee you there's already been comments made that this is a dangerous product and a dangerous idea that, that they're going to try and block it. I want to talk about this when we come back in the long segment because it tortures me. I have an old TV, not that old, like five, six years, that has a DVD player on the side that I've run in the garage on the treadmill. It broke that DVD player. So I went and got another one, plugged it in, and it gave me a message and said, you're not allowed to run another device in this anti-piracy. And these are bought DVDs. Right, I understand. And, and, and then I have all this other equipment in here for TV where we're trying to put on a show. Right. And I'll buy the equipment. It's my show. It won't let it run over a television. Right, and I can buy, I can buy a DVD from Australia and, and pay for it legitimately, and it will not run on my American DVD player because it's a different region. So it's, so it's, it's stopping technological development so that they can kleptocratically make more money, and instead they're screwing up all the devices like Dr. Stallman talks about. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Are we choosing our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? As we've moved through history, every great leader has had to understand the potential of information. Billions of dollars have been spent privately and publicly looking at how to tap into your psyche. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. When somebody obscures that feedback loop between you observing and testing it out and verifying it, they can take total control of your awareness. All of this is happening so fast, you need to be ahead of the game. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would not only endorse, but demand a war. Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. State of mind, because there's a war on for your mind. Get your copy of State of Mind, the movie, at InfoWars.com. And remember, every order at InfoWarsStore.com receives a free citizen rulebook. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then, of course, we come back 7 o'clock Central with InfoWars Nightly News. John McAvee, the legendary anti-virus software engineer and mogul, is here in studio. Who is McAfee.com? That is his very interesting and informative uh, website. So you can go there and check that out. And it has lots of guns. Uh, we're going to talk to John in a minute but before we get back into his new device he's developing. Uh, sounds very interesting during the break. He was telling me about it. We went down with an open carry at the Alamo, over 1,000 people with guns uh, Saturday, and it made national news. That was certainly fun to openly exercise our right to self-defense and deprogram all these people who think you should own guns. We'll talk to him about guns as well. Before we go any further, 
Don't forget, we have InfoWarsStore.com. And this broadcast is listener supported. So I sell the very best products that I've researched, that I believe in, that I think are high quality for you and your family at the lowest prices, like Pro One, Pro Pure, stainless steel systems, the entire family of Pro Pure systems, the lowest price anywhere already. 10% off promo code WATER at InfoWarsStore.com. Or call toll-free, 888-253-3139 if you have any questions or comments or want to order over the phone. Or you can also find out the listings and prices online and then order via snail mail at P.O. Box 19549, Austin, Texas, 78760. And, of course, there's hundreds of books and films and hard-to-get titles at InfoWarsStore.com as well. And there's InfoWarsHealth.com and InfoWarsLife.com with all the great products like InfoWarsLife.com and our maiden product, deep research for years on this with a scientist like Dr. Group. Uh, and I went and did the research, it, it filed at the National Academy of Sciences, you name it. This is the only nascent iodine that's put through this patented system uh, to atomize it down to its absolute most basic uh, elemental form of atomic iodine. And let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, it is something else. So InfoWarsLife.com. It is sold out. We'll have more in about two weeks. So get in line to get it shipped out to you first. I'm sorry. They had to expand the size of their uh, FDA-approved laboratory to be able to supply us. They've never seen anything like this. and So it's great. We're getting high-quality products out and funding uh, our operation. It was just a little 40-year scientific, you know, specialist installation that we had to do this. Uh, they weren't ready to mass produce it. But that is now now happening in forwardslife.com or as I said, 888-253-3139. John McAfee is here with us and who is McAfee.com is his site. So we got cut off by the break. You were getting into your device. I mean, if you tell the audience as much as you can tell them. You were telling me quite a bit, but I don't know if that was in confidence about how revolutionary but also simple this is going to be and, and what it's going to do. Uh, the device is a, basically a hardware device that interfaces with your smartphone. Uh, you carry it in your pocket. It has no screen. It has an on-off switch and a little light to show that the battery is running, and that's it. Um, and we have an application that runs on your, your iPhone or your Android phone uh, that when you want to switch from the Internet to the secure network, you press a button, and then you're now in our, our network, which is anybody else who has one of these devices within a quarter of a mile, you're communicating. And if you're in a city or a college campus, there may be thousands of those uh, that are that are close by. Um, it's an information sharing network. It's a file sharing network. So it's like a new internet or a it's private like a new internet. And it'll start out small, of course, because everyone won't have these things. Have these things. But eventually, I mean, it's, you, you switch from the the current internet to the to the secure internet over and over and over. And, and to begin with, you might not be able to communicate with someone in India. But after a year, when we get enough of these and and the information is relayed then it'll be just like the internet. But it'll be able to get on the net as the first reason to then protect your identity. That's Absolutely. It, it, it protects your identity, and when you're on the secure part of the network, no one knows who you are. Uh, all of the data is encrypted, and it's encrypted by a technique that the NSA has not been involved in, so they can't break it, they can't get into it, uh, and neither the sender nor the receiver. Let me guess, does it have to deal with uh, holograms? It does not, no, sir. Okay. I was if trying to. If it did, I wouldn't tell you, would I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was talking to my dad about this, and he said, "I bet it's a hologram interface." <laughs> uh, my dad's smarter than I am in some ways, but go ahead. Uh, no, so I, I, I'm not going to not going to say for the simple reason. No, obviously, don't say. We yeah. don't want people to know. So, um, so it's going to be very secure. So neither the NSA nor the CIA nor the FBI nor Army intelligence nor anyone can find out who you're talking to, what you're saying. Uh, and what you're exchanging, which is really what we should have that right anyway. Now, now you're a trailblazer in your own right, obviously, but other great minds are going to hear this, or they probably already thought of it. Even if they try to stop you selling this here domestically, it's going to be a huge international market, you and then other people are going to make clones or knockoffs and then yes. other technologies. They're not going to be able to stop this. Well, they, they may stop me temporarily, of, of course. You know, they may say, you can't sell this. And I'll say, fine, you know, you only, you're... you're your control stops at your boundaries. You have Canada and Mexico and the ocean. I'll sell it everywhere else. Uh, it will have to get here eventually. Any, any technology which is beneficial will eventually get here. We know that. It just may take time. The music industry is going to raise hell and, and complain. Uh, the movie industry is going to complain. But, you know, the intellectual property is, 
is has been way overplayed by them for the past 10 years. Well, think about it. They're trying to get world treaties that end free speech globally for yeah. them. They are encroaching on our rights of course. in the name of their rights. I'm yeah. sick of it. Absolutely. And so they are they are shutting down operations that are valid, useful things for for it's like shutting down telephones because uh, criminals are using it to to covertly rob banks or whatever. It's insane. We, 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 can't, we can't protect ourselves to the point that we can't even use technology. Well, folks used to hack with a telephone. Do, I mean, do Absolutely. you ban using telephones? That's right. In fact, the, the first one to do so was a gentleman named Captain Crunch, who got the, these little whistles oh, yeah. from the captain, and he learned how to make tones on it for the old telephone so that he could, he could make free long-distance calls. And that was the first telephone hacking. Well, we didn't shut down the phones because of that. We didn't. We just, we just arrested him. Isn't that the sensible thing to do? But now they're wanting us to shut down technologies like file sharing, which is very useful for everything. You have files, you've got photographs that you take on vacation that you want, you want to share with your friends. You put it out in the cloud and they can share it. Well, do you want to stop that because people can put uh, music they, that they haven't paid for on the net? And That's right. You can't download. have prior restraint. You know, I, I ran into anti-gun people uh, at uh, our Alamo open carry this Saturday, mm -hmm. and they said... You know, my daughter got shot at Aurora, and I said, I'm sorry for your daughter, yes. but statistically, crimes using guns are down 49% because of good guys having guns, just department numbers. Right. They didn't even deny that, but they still said, well, it's still gun owner's fault this happened. And I said, if somebody stabs somebody, is it Not the knife, knife maker's orders. fault? Yes. Or if I sell somebody a car and they drive down the road and kill somebody, this putting the guilt on us when we didn't do it, it's just crazy. Well, you know, it's I, an authoritarianism. Absolutely. I've... You know, I've owned and carried guns ever since I was 12 when my father took me hunting for the first time. Uh, and, he sh and he taught me how to handle guns properly and, and not to point them at people and how to load them and unload them. And seriously, for the past 10 years, I have never been without a gun except when I shower. And when I get paranoid sometimes, I don't shower, so my wife complains, you know. So, um, and I've never pointed a gun at anyone, certainly never shot at anybody. Um, but it, it is, to me, a deterrent if we all carry guns. I lived in a, a town called Rodeo, New Mexico, a small town of a couple of hundred people. Everybody was armed there. Everybody. Grand, I love it. Grand, well, they never had a problem. They never had a, a robbery in the grocery store. They never had anything. I mean, a criminal coming through town that, you know, pulls a gun out uh, at, a, at a cafe, the, all, the, all the customers are going to pull a gun. The well, that, is criminals gun. are on record that they don't go to small towns of and course, rural areas because, because they know. They know. And so what's wrong with that? And there's, there's no violent crime there. We all carry guns, but I, I never saw a gun pulled and pulled. Well, you asked anyone. permission if you could, you know, like, hey, I'm bringing a gun. We're like, well, you better. <laughs> right. That's what they said. So don't try anything here. They said we're, we're all armed. Well, no, but I mean, for us, it's like having a pencil or a coffee oh, cup. And it's me, a tool. Thing. I sleep with mine. Now, I stopped sleeping with it in my hand for obvious reasons, okay? Uh, but but I see. Oh, then it gets all lonely. Yeah, you know what? But nightmares and things like that. It's pretty scary. My my car. Oh, I hear said, you, I hear No you. more. It's not going to be in your hand anymore. And I said, <laughs> if, I lay it, if I lay it next to me here on the bed, that's okay. Um, but I'm always with a gun. And and why not? I mean, we the, the criminals have guns. And, well, and off record, you you've had a lot of issues. I mean, they're the, obviously. Of course, and and I, you know, I mean, for for a month and a half, the Belizean government was actively trying to shoot me and. Um, you know, why shouldn't I carry guns and why shouldn't I be able to protect myself? Well, why are they allowed to have guns, but we aren't? Well, that's, that's the problem, isn't it? And here's the thing. If you, if you pass a law saying we can't have guns, I promise you, the criminals don't care. They're already breaking the law. Do you think they care if, they, if they're carrying an illegal weapon? That's so absurd. So we're not going to take it out of the hands of the people who are going to do damage with guns. We're taking it out of the hands of people who protect themselves from those people who are trying to do damage. So I don't know. And, I, you know, I'm going to have my gun in my hand except when I'm sleeping or in my pocket. Or I've, I've got one here now, obviously. Uh, and, um, you know, as, as long as I can because it's my right. But, I mean, it goes back to rural areas where you had grizzly bears or, or, the, yes. or the immigrants were fighting with the natives. I mean, it came down to you better have a gun on you or you could get killed. Or you would get killed. It's a fact of life. I mean, you know, the, the world is a dangerous place, especially outside of our, our comfort. Well, here's my issue. We're not worried about death threats around here and stuff because somebody ever tries to come around here with something. I mean, any, anybody wants to carry a gun in their briefcase or CHL, you name it, folks are packing around here. You're right. And that's just the way it is. And it's peaceful. It's happy. And everybody's friendly. Right. If someone does come in here, I'll stand with you with my gun. All right. So. <laughs> We're ready right now. I mean, here you go. Ready to go. 
You know, I like revolvers myself, just because you know. they're, you know, you know. No, I, I, I do too, and I prefer the hammerless. Oh, really? I didn't even know that's what you had. But, well, I've got, I've got all it. kinds of guns, and I, I carry different guns for different occasions. It's loaded. Here, I'll let you. I notice yours is not. There you go. All right. There you go. I like a 357, just because in stressful situation. Oh, it's loaded. I didn't see Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A 357, you know, in a stressful situation is, is, is good. It's got the best penetration for something like oh, this. No question, but that's, that's a little lighter to carry. And oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, and the hammerless variety, you know, so many times before you get out of your pocket, not to, not to point it at someone, just at the end of the day, and the hammer gets caught on your pocket. But look at our guns. They're, they're, they're friendly. friendly. They're hanging yeah. out together right there. We get a document cam shot on that. And in fact, in fact, they, here, we'll put them over here by you, <laughs> and they can just have some time together. All there right, you go. Then. All right, then. Look at that. That's, like, got, powerful. They're, like, I have, exchanging. I have, I have some 357s, too. I tell you what the finest little carry gun is, is the new Ruger, that little micro 380. I know oh, yeah. it doesn't carry a bunch of a punch, but, you know, it's... Now, one of my friend's uh, wives carries that in her purse. Yeah. Well, I carry one in each pocket sometimes because they're so light you can't see them that you don't even know you're carrying them. Um, you know, seven rounds, uh, 380. He's not a bad gun. James Bond used the, the uh, Beretta 380. Remember that in the first James Bond movie? They try to give him a different. You're gun. you're like an adventurer, aren't you? I don't what know. made you go down to Belize? I guess adventure. Why not? It, it, you, you know, I think we might live once, just once. And, and if that's the case, I don't want to miss anything. I don't miss anything, Alex. Without getting into your security and things, uh, you're traveling around the U.S. right now. I am. I'm traveling with security, and because of an incident that happened recently, I've beefed it up, and I'm I'm traveling with some very serious security now. I did so. notice that. Well, that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, but, but, I mean, going back, obviously, you were a computer programmer. I, I think worked at NASA in places, going over your bio. I, I mean, do you have any shadowy background that you think they might be after you for? You know, I mean, not shadowy bad, but secretive stuff. Well, I mean, I had a top secret security clearance for a while when I worked at NASA. And I did work on some black programs, but nothing that, that anyone would want to, to off me for. Uh, I think my biggest concern is Belize. You know, I have, I ran afoul of the Belizean government, and I, I came back and I stated some some things that maybe should not have been stated. That the prime minister ordered the death of Arthur Young, that John Saldivar uh, was selling passports illegally. Uh, that may, and th this is the minister of national security. He's in charge of the army and the police, and of course the prime minister is in charge of everything. Well, they're not happy about that, and they're afraid that if I provide more evidence, the the entire government will unravel. So obviously, I have to think that maybe in the back of their minds they would they would feel better uh, if I wasn't here. I don't well, know. I know is, you is talk. That, is that paranoia? May I ask you? No, that? I don't think that's paranoia. I mean, knowing what goes on in the government of Belize, what it's used for, how famously piratical it is. I don't know about those individuals, but I know that certainly I would be concerned if I had the entire Belizean mafia-style government uh, angry at me. Right, and the other thing is, is that they. They have a, a longer reach than you might imagine. For example, there are American businesses that would love to do business in Belize for a lot of you know, reasons. You can do illegal things there if you, if you pay the right people and, and your profits can soar. And in fact, the, the, the uh, Belizean soccer team came to Portland, where I live, in July. And that's kind of weird, isn't it, to play soccer? And with them, uh, there was an American businessman who had a private jet who was flying around John Salvidar. Uh, and two other people, the, uh, the head of the press office in Belize and a city councilman named uh, Dean Samuel, Samuels. And, um, you know, you look at that and you think, well, you know, I don't know, why did they come to my city? Why did the head of national security come to my town way up there, you know? So I'm thinking, well, I don't know, maybe I should be cautious. And I am cautious. I don't call that paranoia. Well, I don't, You'd be you stupid know, if you weren't I would concerned. be stupid. And so as a result, when I go somewhere, I, people, people arrive in advance. They check things out. They look to see if... Anything unusual is happening. Uh, I change venues constantly. I tell them I'm going to be staying at one hotel and check into another. And when I arrive, I arrive with some serious security. Uh, so, um, well, uh, I mean, going back to Belize, you were talking about Muslims and certain countries and Ryerson. It was nowhere in the press. And then it had to be four months later. Exactly what you said about that came out. Uh, and you said that's one of the reasons they were after you. Uh, I mean, do you now know, have you figured out out of all the reasons why you think folks were after you? They're after me because of what I knew. Because, you know, when they raided my, my compound in Orange Walk in, in May, uh, shot my dog in front of my eyes, did a half million dollars worth of damage, kept me handcuffed in the sun for 14 hours. By the way, that's, I don't recommend that as, as something to do for fun, Alex. Oh, no, that hurts. That does hurt, believe me. Uh, I tried not to whimper the whole day, and I didn't. Um, and then left, 
uh, and then came back and said, you know, are you going to, um, you know, you, are you going to reconsider giving us a donation to the party? And I go, no, I'm not. I went to the press. Uh, at that point, I started handing out presents, computers that I had my own software on just to monitor things, okay? I gave them to the, uh, all the government ministers and their secretaries and their aides, and, and that's how I found out what was happening. So you gave them a Trojan horse. I did. You made them think they'd won. You started yes. giving them goodies. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just like the general public, they just take devices. They take devices. They don't, they don't think. They don't think, well, who is this man? Well, I'm John McAfee, for heaven's sake. I invented computer security. <laughs> you, think, you think I can't turn on your microphone, on your laptop, in your office, and watch what you're doing? That's so trivial. Anybody can do it. So it maybe in, in retrospect, it may have been a mistake. Because then you learned all the secrets. You were I like your own private stuff. NSA. I learned all the stuff that's going on, and it was scary. And then I came back, and I made the mistake of actually telling it on the blog. And so, yeah, you know, I, I, you, you would be paranoid, too, if, if, you know, these people came up to your town and some, Ameri some, some shady American businessman with a private jet drive, flying them all over America, showing up in your town. It's like, whoa. So, you know, maybe the next time I'm on your show, we will, we will discuss this in greater detail. It might make a really nice show. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you. Because, because, because an event did actually happen uh, recently that, um, that caused me to to more than double my security and, and start asking a bunch of very hard questions. I bet know. they're not happy they messed with you, though. Yeah, you know, If they I wouldn't have done that to your dog and all that stuff, would you, everything no, be fine? I shot my dog, I think we could have fixed this. But you don't shoot my dogs. My, my, my dog's a family. You know, I, I don't know how you feel about animals, but, the, you know, a, a dog is... Oh, I, I love dogs. Uh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're a member of the family. They provide protection. And I think they're maybe the best members of my family. I'm well, so they're certainly the most loyal members exactly. of my family. Exactly. Well, I promise you, he's never going to turn on you. Exactly. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah. I judge <laughs> what is the secret of the universe. <laughs> Infoworth.com. <yeah. laughs> Technology is rapidly increasing, to say the least. Some people like Ray Kurzweil believe that there's going to be a singularity. I believe you'll have a singularity in information and news first, or something approximating that, something getting close to it, where... No matter what the system does, they're not going to be able to hide stuff anymore. And when they try to put out disinfo, that's going to be exposed. And that's already happening. The Pentagon PSYOPs head came out a few months ago and said they're in deep trouble. They're ordered a lie to the public, and the public's catching them. Mm -hmm. And the Pentagon said, we want to stop lying. And there were people freaking out during the Pentagon briefing that was streamed on the Internet, right. getting up saying, we don't want to lie anymore. I mean, it was real. Sure. But I think at the higher level, they told them to do it to try to get people's confidence to go, we promise we won't lie anymore. But uh, here is... Uh, uh, Ray Kurzweil, one of the Google execs, saying, meet the Google executive who plans to cheat death. Ray Kurzweil takes 150 vitamins a day so he can hold out long enough for invention of robots that will keep humans alive. Now, whether this is real or not, in my film Endgame that I made seven years ago, I show all the quotes. They say humans are bad. They're going to establish world government, forcibly reduce world population. They're going to merge with machines and live forever. I didn't say that, as the New York Times said. I was quoting Kurzweil and others. Here he is back in the news today. This is the Daily Mail. What do you think uh, of, of these things? Because whether it's feasible down the road or not, these people are maniacs who are anti-human. What is your take on it? Well, you know... Uh in one in one uh, respect, I, I um, admire Kurzweil because he. I do too. He developed some some great music, okay, or musical devices. Um, and the copying machine, or a bunch of other. Stuff. I'm not sure about the copying machine. Well, the modern he's one. A, he's a, he's a, he's scanner, a, he, scanner. Right, he's a brilliant man. There's no question about it. Um, yeah, I don't want to merge with the machine. Quite frankly, I, I would rather become a little more human than I even am. I think we become machines by by spending our days watching the the television instead of watching the world around us. I agree. And I, I think that there's so much of modern life which turns us into machines that why bother making a mechanical device to connect with us? We're, we're already halfway machines. I'd like to go the other way. And, and let's get a little more human. You know, let's have more personal face-to-face -face communication. And, and let's get out and shoot or, or, or do what we like to do. Or just get some fresh air, jog around the block. How much of that is, is happening these days? It's less and less and less. And when it does happen, it's structured and it's formalized. Um, so, you know... Yeah, it's time. called quality time to take your kids out in nature. Right. Well, quality time should be every every moment of life, as, as I understand it. Every single moment. 
And if you're not having quality time 24 hours a day, do something else, Alex. I agree. with The revolution against tyrants is having fun, having friends, and not being in the cookie-cutter system. That's it. Exactly. You know, getting into real life. And take some risks because to have quality... Any quality time is risky. It means you've got to get out of, get off of your comfortable sofa, out of your safe, secure house, and into a world which is unpredictable and unknown. It's, it's a mystery. Well, isn't that how things were when you were a kid? Wasn't it great to get out and, and explore the mystery of life, the mystery of the world? I'll, I'll uh, absolutely go into a friend's house and going out in the woods. You bet. Sneaking That's on it. some farmer's uh, ranch and uh, picking strawberries in your neighbor's backyard at night, whether we, you know, without them knowing, whatever. It's 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 an adventure. It's 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 life as it should be. We should all be children again. They're trying to insert us into these bubbles where they bombard us with nothing but their propaganda to keep us from seeing the wider universe. All right. Well, that's how they control us, see? If you see the wider universe, you're going to ask questions, aren't you? Like, what the hell are you saying? You're, you're, you're giving us garbage about Obamacare. But if all we get is the, the news, we, some of us are going to believe it. You can fool all the people some of the time. But you're talking about singularities? You can't fool all the people all the time. What do you think of a singularity? I mean, do you think that really will come? I think it's happened in, in, in many cases. I think, I think th this is evidence of it here. We, we have something which is so obviously broken and improper that the president is saying, well, this is what I expected. It, me it meets expectations. So it's a, it's a con artist singularity. Absolutely. It's well, like a magician, you know, doing, doing a trick. You know, don't watch what the left hand is doing. And if we don't watch what the left hand is doing, we go, wow. Hold on. We got a one minute break. I got to do five minutes overdrive. John McAfee's our guest. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Man, this, this Obamacare video, we've got it up on Infowars.com. This woman falling over, she's acting like a zombie. I mean, it's just getting weirder and weirder. And at his events, women will start collapsing everywhere like he's Elvis Presley. I mean, it's getting weird. Uh, was fainting woman at uh, Obamacare staged event? Steve Watson asked up on Infowars.com. Bizarre mind control caught on camera with a woman saying that Congress is the devil. She's like programmed and goes into some trance. I don't usually cover stuff like this, but it's so weird. Top Democrat opens the door for Social Security cuts, Kurt Nemo. I never got to this today, but we'll play it on the nightly news or get Mark Dice on tomorrow. Americans sign petition to support Nazi, Stahl, or where in police state. They're asked that if it's for Obama. So it's what you were just saying before the break, John McAfee, legendary programmer and the inventor of uh, antivirus software. He, the, you know, I mean, the whole concept uh, is here with us. We only got four minutes left. You were talking about the singularity of BS we've reached where now they say this Obamacare is wonderful. The site works better than we thought. <laughs> Are they trying to overthrow reality by, by, by almost polluting things with so much disinfo? People kind of go into learned helplessness? Well, you know, at first they do, but I, I think you're going to find something else. You know, the common man ultimately is smarter than we give them credit for. At some point, everyone is going to look, to, look at each other and think, wait a minute. The emperor has no clothes, you know. It doesn't matter. Everybody says, "Oh yeah, he's dressed," and you, someone's going to the child's going to say, "Look, the emperor's naked." The old the old story, and and someone's going to say, "Wait a minute, he just said that that this thing is perfect, it's just as expected," and the world is saying it's broken. So at some point, we're all going to look at each other and go, "All right, it is bullshit, isn't it?" And, and trust me, that's what will happen. And that's when some, the overthrow, I don't mean the armed overthrow. I mean, we, we, we go to the polls and we recall everybody. And we, a, we, mental we a mental it's overthrow. A mental overthrow. A mental overthrow. And then, and then we look at ourselves and we take responsibility and realize what we've done. We have allowed this to happen through fear. We're afraid of, of the, the terrorists. We're afraid of the Muslims. We're afraid of everything. And we, we've created, we've, or we've allowed to be created, um, you know, the Homeland Security and the Transportation Security Administration, all the things that, you know, I have to get halfway undressed every time I come, like to get here. Halfway undressed to go through security. Well, that's really bizarre. Um, and at some point we go, no, wait a minute, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. We call these people, boot them out of office. Let's, let's change what's happening. We are Americans. We still have a constitution. Let's adhere to it and let's make use of it. We have, this, we have the right. You think we can't recall our congressman? We can. Go to the polls, sign some petitions, get things changed.
I agree with you. We've only got about a minute and a half left. Uh, John McAfee here visiting us in Austin, Texas. I think this has been a legendary interview. Who is McAfee.com is your website. Any other points that after this interview is over, you wish you would have made? Um, you know, I, I think none other than, you know, when the music industry does rise up against me, when this product comes out and says this is a dangerous product, uh, you know, make your voices heard. Uh, you I think they're product. dangerous trying to bully our freedom of course. and preemptively tie us up because we might do something wrong. Absolutely. They, they've allowed so many technologies to die because they were a threat to that industry. Well, we, I want those technologies. I would like to have the right to freely share information. Let me do that. The risk, if there's a risk, well, that's too bad. Well, that's if I commit there. something, then I get in trouble. You don't, like John McCain said, they'll remote control kill your computer if they think you've downloaded a song illegally with no judge or jury. They'll destroy your computer with no proof because they feel like it. Of course. Why not? I mean, they have the power. That's the, that's the issue. They have the idea. Well, why not? I'm doing it for the better good of everybody. Like, I know what you need, Alex, and I'm going to do what's right for you. Don't you worry about thinking and, and choosing things for yourself. I will decide because we know what's right. Oh, well, they don't know what's right. Well, that's called slavery. Yes, indeed. It's slavery in every aspect. It starts with mental slavery, where we actually believe the nonsense that we're being Amazing. Called. John McAfee, good to know you personally. <laughs> Folks, Lord willing, we'll be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. Get your subscriptions at PrisonPlanet.tv. And for everybody, we'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, with the syndicated radio broadcast. Obamacare is a dud, even if he says it isn't. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.